Well, good morning to you, and uh, welcome to those of you that are joining us online. We're so glad that you're with us, and those of you in this room just have uh, sensed the powerful presence of Jesus with us, have you? And knowing that he's among us and with us just changes everything and gives me hope and buoyancy in the midst of chaotic crisis times. Uh, man, I just want to, uh, again, thank you for your faithfulness and giving. Thank you for those of you that give online and those of you that use our kiosk and find ways to continue to give. And we're, uh, we're staying afloat in Jesus' name and God's been good. Uh, many of you have started to give as you've uh, joined us in this journey of faith. I want to encourage you, if you are new with us, that you would text the word new to this text number 314-451-7575. And that number will be up now and later. Uh, you can text that word new and, and we'll correspond with you. Just love to get to know you and hear about your story and what God is doing. I love this time of year because as we begin to lift our sights, as, uh, as Ryan was teaching us a while ago, to do a reset. That's what Lent is about. And some of us as evangelicals, we're not really familiar with that word, but it's simply a way to say, Lord, I want to take these 40 days before Easter and begin to uh, recenter myself because I know myself, I can get off track. It's like I start out the year with a bang, come on Jesus, let's go, and just find myself slowly like on a snowy, icy road, just gradually getting away from the main thing. And so Lent is a way of, for us to say, come on, let's, let's get back to Jesus. I'm going to take these 40 days and vo- invite you to do that with me in some way, uh, recalibrating, resetting your life to say, come on, let's, let's get our hearts ready for Easter. And then, and then when resurrection day comes we're like yes thank you Jesus you are raised from the dead and you have ascended on high and he's living among us so let's let's do this we're in this series called faith works and I've been anticipating this just praying that God will speak through his word through the book of James that's where we are if you want to get your copy of God's word and we're going to work through as much as we can before Easter and then maybe pick it back up And he says these words right at the beginning of his letter. Count it all joy or consider it joy. My brothers, this includes the sisters as well, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. We have a daycare here, and uh, from my office, I can watch some of the things happen, and sometimes when I walk down the uh, the, the hallway, I can, I just love to poke my head in the room and and see the uh, the little crumb snatchers uh, doing their thing, and then then watching the the workers as they push the buggies around the hall, and and they are, they are just happy to be here, mostly. Uh, They are they are cared for and they are protected and they're fed and they get their diaper changed and uh, then they get to take naps, which is basically all those things. That's just uh, the life I dream of is just being cared for with the exception of changing my diaper. That's not the fun part. But what I long for is that, and then, and then there, there are sometimes, occasionally there's this alarm that goes off And they begin to march the kids hand in hand out out the doorway. And they've already sent an email to me, so I don't move from my desk. And they've told me, hey, there's going to be a test. It's just a test, a safety drill that we're going to have. So don't do anything. And I'll watch the kids, and they're happy uh, with their hands held to each other, marching out the door. And they're like, yay, we get to go outside. Isn't this great? And they're excited about a test. I remember those days in high school a few times where the teacher, when you walk into the room, the very first th- words out of her mouth were, all right, close your books, pull out a clean piece of paper, and you'd hear the whole class just do what? Oh, it means a pop quiz, a pop test, surprise test. This is more like life than the safety drill in the daycare. Because in life, don't you wish you could get a heads up and email that says, there's going to be a trial. 
There's going to be a test, but it's more like a pop quiz that we don't see it coming. It's a surprise, a test, a trial. And why do teachers do that? They do it because, well, they say, well, I just want to see you squirm. No, that's not why. They do it because they're trying to prepare you for life. Because in real life, you don't get a heads up on trials and tests. They just hit you. They just come. And Jesus is not about making us squirm and just say, oh, man. He is wanting us to get something that we don't have. And that's why his brother, James, who writes this letter, after Jesus has ascended on high, James writes the saints, the the called out ones, the people of God who have, as it says in verse 1, the dispersion. This means that they've been scattered abroad from Jerusalem, from Rome. They've moved out because of persecution. They've been scattered. And he writes to them, he says, Count it all joy. Are you kidding me? Come on, James. Let's, let's get real. How do you count trials and tests joy? Uh, how, do we, how can we look at these things and just feel a, a leap in our heart, kind of a, a skip in our step and say, oh, boy, trials. That doesn't seem to be my experience. I don't know about you. But it does happen Trouble comes, uninvited or not. Trials come, tests come, and there is no email, no siren that goes off and says, this is only a test. It just happens, and it comes. And James is going to help us as he helped these early Christians who were going through these difficult times. He said, brothers, count it joy, consider it joy. When trials come, what are trials? What do you mean by that, trials? Trials are circumstances that God works or allows to strengthen our faith. He allows them to come. He allows them for his good purposes in our life. When you meet, and I I love that phrase because it's reminding us that you don't plan on it. It just happens. You just meet trials. You meet these circumstances you you didn't anticipate, you weren't looking for, but they just happen, and you can't predict when. It's life. It's the devil. It's just sometimes circumstances that come your way that you don't anticipate. And God says through his brother James, count it joy when you meet these things. I'm not talking about late fees from you skipping your mortgage. That's not a trial. That's just dumb. I've done it too, but it's just dumb. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about heartbreak from dating a loser guy. Just don't date him. You won't have that trial. I'm talking about trouble that comes just because you live in a broken world and because there is a devil, because there, I know some of you don't believe in him, but he's real. And he fights the people of God. And it takes the awareness of the Holy Spirit to begin to understand you do have an adversary. And he doesn't love you and he doesn't have a good plan for your life. He has a bad plan. But God uses the things that even Satan allows in our life for his good purpose, and James is going to help me and help us. When I see this, though, when I say, count it all joy, brothers, when you fall into these things, because it's testing your faith, and it's going to produce steadfastness. Does anybody like me just want to raise your hand and say, please, can I just get a pass? I don't don't want it. I don't want to get stronger. I mean, sometimes I feel that way. I just want to be me. I don't want to have to go through things. You know those songs that say, whatever doesn't kill you make it, makes you stronger? Say, no, it feels like it's killing me. I don't, I don't want to go through this. But I've learned and I've come to understand this. You know that some, in my life, I've never found that in my greatest ease and comfort that that's when I grow. I wish it was, was true. 
I've never heard anybody say, you know, Pastor, the greatest growth in my life when I've grown closest to Jesus have been those long seasons of great comfort in my life. I wish it was true, but it's not the case. And God knows that about us. So he says, count it joy. And I want us to see that he doesn't say, count all your trials as joy. He doesn't say that. No, pain is pain. Sorrow is sorrow. He's not saying, oh, just act like it's happy times. You know, when you're, when you're in pain, when you're going through cancer, just go, oh, isn't this great? No, pain is pain. Neither is he saying to count it only joy. That I found in my life I can actually have the joy of the Lord, but also have sadness or grief or disappointment. A deep, deep river that God puts in my heart that he allows joy to pass through my life. And why does he allow it? Because there is a purpose. He's wanting to give us endurance. So I wrote these two things down as I was studying this week, thinking about this, how that that God has his purposes and Satan has his purposes. So God allows or works trials in my life and in your life to strengthen your faith, but Satan works trials to destroy your faith. Same trial, different purpose. God allows it. He's hoping that you will endure, that you will get stronger. Satan is saying, oh, no, let's make this, uh, let's use this for my purposes. I want you you to quit believing. I want you to lose your faith. That's That's Satan's goal in your life. And so God wants to give us a faith that will last under pressure. And if that's going to happen, that means it's got to be tested. So I was thinking about that, thinking about a few years ago when I got a, a little boat and, and I love to get on the water and ski and wakeboard and that stuff. I can't wait till summer comes. I got this little boat and, uh, and it was running when I got it. So I thought, well, hey, let's take it out on the water. And you know, it's springtime. Let's and I bought it the previous year, and so I, I had had a winter rise, and so I got it out on the water, and, and uh, you know, the trailer's pulling away, and I'd wave, and, and I let go, and, and then get out in the water, and then I try to start it. It doesn't start. I'm going, wait, come back. I'm like stuck out on the water, and the boat isn't working because I hadn't tested it first. And sometimes that happens in life, and I imagine there's even some people here today or maybe watching online that you find yourself in circumstances where you have, your faith has not been tested, and maybe you're kind of new in in Christ, and you say, oh yeah, I believe in God, but then life happens, trials happen. And then this thought comes and says, well, this isn't working. I thought if there's a God, I thought he'd make sure that trouble didn't happen in my life. I thought he would keep me from bad stuff happening. So I'm checking out, and you find yourself dead in the water, and you're not moving because the faith has not been tested. So if we can see that God actually allows tests for a good purpose in our lives, and we can count it joy. James, please help me because I don't feel this way. When trials come, I want to say, why, God? Why are you letting this happen to me? Haven't I been faithful? Haven't I done the right things? Haven't I paid tithes? Haven't haven't I gone to church when it's snowy and icy? Come on, God. Why? And he allows this test to come even when I don't like it so that it might be proven to be something that is good and strong and lasts a lifetime. It's like when people come to us for premarital counseling and one of the first, and so they say, we're in love, and we go, oh, yeah, that's great. We've heard this before. (laughs) How long have you been in love? It's been three weeks. It's awesome. (laughs) No, what do we say? We say, it's got to be tested. You need to go through a few things before you get married. You need to have a good fight. You need to disagree. Then let's talk about marriage. It's got to be tested because a love that's been tested is worth something. A love that's just a couple of days old, it's not very deep. It's not very strong. So he says, for you know that the testing of your faith produces what? 
steadfastness or endurance. Let endurance have its full effect. Why does he say let it have its, have its full effect? Why does he say that, friends? Talk to me. Why does he say let it happen? Because we don't want to let it happen, that's why. We want to say, can, okay, can we just move on now? I think I've got it. I think I've passed the test. Let's move on. No, he says, let it finish. How many of you found in Christ that sometimes you tried to rush through the trial, rush through the exam, rush through the test, and, and then when you, you got about halfway through, you're like, can we just check out now. <laughs> I, think, I think I've got it. How many of you found that that test comes back around again? Yeah. So he says, let endurance have its perfect work in your life. COVID is going to test your faith. A surprise job transition is going to test your faith. A coworker will test your faith. A child will test your faith. A long wait at the DMV will test your faith. The waiting room, the ER, it's going to test your faith. All these things. So he says various trials, various kinds, they don't come in just one kind of thing. They come five minutes, five years. They come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. And they come and God says, will you allow this to work in your life? I remember early in COVID, about this time last year, I was thinking, oh, this will last just a few weeks. We'll be back to normal. And then I started seeing how long it was going to be. And I thought, Lord, how, what are we going to do as a church? People are going to stop giving. We're going to have to close the doors. And all those, those fears, all those things, will there still be a church? What about, will people still believe after a few weeks with a, watching church online? And, and then it turned into months. Lord, are we going to, are we going to make it? And I, and I was thinking about this. Uh, will there still be a church? And look, here we are. But it's had to be a test, a trial. And what is my part and your part in it? It's to let it have its full effect, its full effect. But what happens in these trials is you start to doubt. You doubt yourself, you doubt God. I'm not talking about saying, is there a God? But maybe you question his goodness. So that's why he says, if any of you lacks wisdom, verse 5, let him ask God. Why does he say this right after the trial bit? Because he's saying, we start saying, is this right? Does this happen to Christians? I mean, does this happen when you live righteously? Does, ask for wisdom in your trial. Who does what? This God who gives generously. I'm so glad James says that. He's a generous God. He's not saying, why are you asking questions? Just get over yourself. No, he's generous wisdom to us in the middle some of you are in the in the in the heat of a a serious trial and God's saying just ask me wisdom I'll give it to you I'll help you understand let him ask in faith I'm talking about a faith that works even in the midst of trials that without doubting we still say God I need wisdom right in the middle of this COVID in the middle of this homeschooling in the middle of this job transition God help me to see this clearly help me to get this test right I don't like this test but God I believe you're doing something in me so God says, I'm going to give you something through this trial. I'm going to be generous to you. I'm going to give you a faith that endures. Now, my wife and I, we haven't been married as, as long as many of you, but we celebrated Valentine's Day, and we usually do a couple cards apiece, and so I did a, a goofy one and I did a goopy one. Now, the goofy one, I'll spare you the joke, and it was just kind of corny, but in the goopy one, I said some things. I won't give you all the stuff because it's TMI, but I'll tell you some of it. Oh, and basically, it was things like, baby, we've been through a lot of things, a lot of tough times, a lot of times where we've cried together and laughed together, but I wouldn't trade any of it because of who we are today. And I find that I love you more than I did when I said I love you for the first time. 
That's the kind of love you can't get on the internet. You can't order it. You can't get it in a few days. It comes from going through some things. And why do I need to say that to my wife? Because there, there may come just the, the hint of a temptation in, in a tough time or in an argument where that voice would say, oh, you can do better than that. Just for a flash that the enemy might plant a thought like that. that said, Maybe I'd be better off if I wasn't married. But it doesn't last because that momentary lust for whatever, whoever, doesn't stay in my mind because it is not a tested love. It's not an enduring love. I know it doesn't compare to what's happened with us through these years of marriage together because I can't say to somebody else, I can't say, hey, you remember when? You remember when, baby, remember when we... We got so tickled in the restaurant that I thought they were going to ask us to leave. I can't say to somebody else, remember when my, my dad passed last year and I got the call and we stood at his casket together? Remember, remember when they told us that you needed a heart bypass and you were in that room and they got ready to roll, your, roll you out and... I kissed you on the forehead and I said, I'll see you on the other side of this surgery. That kind of love can't come any other way except going through things. It's tested. It's enduring love. This is the kind of love that the Father wants you to have, the kind of faith that he wants you to have. That you can, after you go through things, that the Lord can say to you, remember? Remember when you were in that job transition and you said to your spouse, I don't know if we're going to make it, but we've got to trust the Lord, baby. Do you remember, son? Do you remember, daughter, when you, you got the C word from the doctor and you thought, this is the end? He said, honey, we've got to trust the Lord as our healer. I don't know how we're going to get through this, but we're going to get through this, and you trusted me. Do you remember, son? Do you remember, daughter? Do you remember that night, that, that Sunday back in 1968 when you, you heard the message on the gospel and, and you were afraid because you thought of eternity as separated from God, and then you cried out to me and you said, yes, and I saved you and I forgave you. Do you remember that? Do you remember passing through the waters and the fires of life? That's the kind of faith that God wants to give you. But it can come no other way except through trials, and through tests. A faith that endures even through the storm and through the heat and the cold. And Satan wants to use those things to destroy your faith. And God wants to use them to strengthen your faith. Not just any old endurance. I'm not talking about enduring through dumb decisions and keep repeating the same stuff. I'm talking about enduring through trials that God allows in our lives under pressure. They tell me that pressure creates diamonds. I don't understand how that miles underground that the pressure and heat in a hidden place can create something so beautiful. But they tell me that's how it happens and then there are these seismic shifts and these earthquakes that push these things up from underground where they've been for a long, long time and suddenly this brilliance pops up from underneath the earth's crust where was that? Oh, it was hidden underneath and it was created from heat and pressure. And I believe that right now God is making some diamonds. A pastor friend that I really respect and love, Mark Sayers from Australia, he says that he believes that he's seen by the Spirit that right now in these chaotic times, one of the things that God is doing is he is pushing some diamonds to the top. Oh, some are walking away from faith. Some are saying, 
I don't want to preach anymore. This is not what I signed up for. Some churches are closing their doors, and some of them can't help it just because income has plummeted, but some are giving up and walking away. But others, because of pressure and heat and the trials of life, God is actually making a diamond rock hard faith that is going to shine in brilliance. And people are going to see it. And they're going to go, there's something there. There's something to that. It must be real. I was thinking about that. And we were talking as elders this week and rejoicing about some of the things. And I heard about one of our 16-year-old girls who went to our children's ministry director and said, I believe I have a word for the students I want to preach on bravery. Can I have the microphone? So she got up with some planning and got some helpers and prepared her talk and talked to the elementary children about being brave for Jesus. That's a diamond. That can't happen except through the trials of life. I think about Mike Erzinger and what God has done in his life. Just a few short years ago, he was across uh, the highway in Oak, Oak Brook Garden Apartments, and God rescued him, and now he's our outreach director and leading people on prayer walks, and our outreach teams are getting some fire underneath them, and they're growing. I'm talking about diamonds. Can't happen unless trials come. Think about a guy who testified in our prayer meeting on Wednesday night. Gary went through some times, tough times during this last year, lost his job for months. He was putting out so many resumes, and and he was like, and I was angry at God. I just drifted from the Lord. He said, but then God got a hold of me, and, and, and then he said this. He said, I'm actually grateful that God let me go through that because it's drawn me closer to him diamond how can that happen count it all joy when you meet trials of various kinds because you know that the trying of our faith the testing of our faith produces steadfastness endurance so let it have its full effect let's pray today Lord, I know that my brothers and sisters feel as I do, that in these days and times of trial and testing, they don't like it any more than I do. But we hear the words of your brother James, count it joy. Because of the end result, because of a a gift of enduring faith that I'm going to give you and it can't come any other way. Lord, I pray that we as the people of God would be patient and not try to get out of the test too soon. Lord, even though so many of us, we just, we just want normal again. God, don't let us abort the process. I believe you're making some diamonds. You're refining some gold. And Lord, that we could say on the other side of this, look what God has done in us. Look at the treasure we found. Lord, if there's someone watching or someone in this room that doesn't know Jesus as Lord, would you speak to them? Because you so want them to know that there is a purpose in trials. And without you, there is no purpose. It's just hard life. And you don't want that for them. And I don't want that for them. God, I want them to know your love, to see you in the storm, to see you in the fire, and know that you're working things for our good. For those who love God, you give us that promise. You're working it for good. So help us, God, as a church, as a people of God, as husbands and wives and daddies and moms and grandmas and grandpas and students we would allow the work of the Holy Spirit to continue in these days and times and trials of our life. May we experience a joy that's supernatural. And God continue to push these diamonds to the top that the world can see that Jesus is real and our faith is strong. Our 
hope is built in you, Lord. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So friends, don't check out. Keep trusting God. He's got you in the palm of his hands. Um, just want to encourage you, those of you that don't know Jesus, make that decision right now. Don't put it off. You don't have tomorrow. You have this moment. You have now. So say yes to Jesus and text the word yes to this number that's on the screen right now. You in the room as well. And we'll help you in your next steps of faith and following Jesus, walking with Jesus every day for his glory. Amen. So good to be with you today. Love you. Lots of love to those of you online. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Let's go for it in Jesus' name. Amen. See you.